Gospel of June the 5th, 2015, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was teaching in the temple area, he said, How do the scribes claim that the Christ is the son of David? David himself, inspired by the Holy Spirit, said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I place your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him Lord. How, so how is he his son? The great crowd heard this with delight. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Of course this happens right after that uh, testing of the Lord by the many people that try to catch him in a mistake. Just yesterday we were reading about this scribe that is confronting the Lord, trying to catch him in a mistake. What is the first commandment? he asks. And the Lord reminds him of chapter 4 of Deuteronomy. And there is like a correction, even though the Lord recites rightly the chapters the chapter 4 we were seeing how the, the scribe forgot to explain that he had to love God with all his life and that was the central part it seemed like there was a draw like the scribe for the first time was not reprimanded by the Lord, but yet the Lord said something mysterious, you're not far from the kingdom of heaven, because the kingdom of heaven is the Lord himself. Now he's trying to make it clear, and he asks, how do the scribes claim, claim that the Christ is the son of David? Why did the scribes claim that? because they just follow in the logical of human. They were able to read in the book of the prophet Isaiah the promise of God to David. One of your descendants will be the Christ. The father never promised David that he was going to be the father. One of your descendants will sit in your throne forever. That's what the Lord said. One of your own of your own soul, of your own body is going to be sitting on your throne forever. Humanly speaking, they would say, well, he is the king, he is the man, so he must be the father. But the Lord is correcting them in an incredible way. Because God complied with the promise to David. Yet he retained for himself the procreation of Jesus Christ when he became incarnated. For the flesh of David was in the person of the Virgin Mary, from the tribe of David, engaged to a man of the same tribe, Joseph. Yet, before there was creation, before there was time, the father engendered his son. How he did that? I have no idea honestly. I have read many fathers of the church who say it is impossible to understand that, how the father procreated his own son, the eternal father. But what he did before there was time and creation, he repeated in time, when they, when the only God decided that the second person, that the second divine person of the Holy Trinity was to be incarnated. The Father again was the sole 
Father of Jesus Christ and thus perform this incredible miracle because we know now through our studies in medicine that there is absolutely no way that from the biological matter of a woman there could come a man. The chromosomes simply, simply are not there. So it was a miracle that out of this virgin, because we know that it is written also in the gospel, she says to the angel, when she hears from the angel that she is going to be pregnant with the Son of God, she asks, how is that going to happen? Because I do not know man. I know no man. And she says that because she, even though she was engaged to Joseph, she remained a virgin. Now, Joseph, even though he was also from the tribe of David, did not have to do anything with the procreation of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I can tell you for certain that he would dare not touch her afterwards. For how could you justify or believe that a just man, fearsome of God, would receive in his home his wife pregnant by hearing that the angel said to him that she was pregnant by the Son of God. And then with that in his mind, dare touch her in any way, any way intimate. It would be impossible. Just think about it. If he believed the angel and received his wife, it would be impossible for her, that for him, it, there would be a great reverence, a great respect for her. So, we know now how God complied with the promise and the Lord is clarifying he is not the son of David he is the descendant of David but not the son of David yet he is the son of David legally too because the his lawful father Joseph from the house of David accepted him a son and thus God provided for his own son not to be called a bastard without a father. Yet now he says, David, driven by the Holy Spirit, said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I place your enemies under your feet. He is reminded, reminding everyone that he, the Son, is equal to the Father. And he is sitting at his, at his right hand, the Lord himself. For on his glorious ascension, there is a human being complete with a glorified body in the presence of the Holy Trinity. The eternal Logos will remain forever a man because he chose not only him, but in, in the three persons of the Holy Trinity, there is just one will. And to me, it is beautiful what John Duns, Duns Scotus said, because since the beginning there was this plan for the Son to become incarnated. That is why creation became. And it is a beautiful thought that it was not due to the fall of man, that that was already provided for by God. And thus, that strengthens our faith that we will one day be in the presence of our Father, of our brother the Lord, and of the Holy Spirit. Until we meet in heaven, God bless you all brothers.